back to the Thrive Time Show. Have a business question? Email us today at info at thrivetimeshow.com. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the conversation. Today we're talking about a subject which I believe to be the most important uh, podcast that we have ever done and will ever do. Uh, there are many other topics that are very technical in nature, very specific uh, uh, proven moves that you can use that will grow your business, proven strategies that can be used to create time freedom, financial freedom. Uh, we teach you the systems that work. However, nothing works unless you do. Profound. Nothing works unless you do. So we're talking today about how to fight the habit of not getting things done, laziness, procrastination, and drifting. We're breaking down a book written by Napoleon Hill called Outwitting the Devil. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Who was Napoleon Hill and what is the book Outwitting the Devil about? Well, Napoleon Hill was the best-selling self-help author of all time. Think about that. The number one of all time. He actually went to work for free for Andrew Carnegie, the world's wealthiest man during his lifetime, he and Rockefeller went back and forth for the the, the title as the world's wealthiest uh, person. Uh, although they never, although they said openly they didn't compete, many felt like they did because they were always number one and two. He worked for these people, and Napoleon Hill documented their strategies, their systems. Andrew Carnegie introduced Napoleon Hill to uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford, the guy who uh, created Ford Motors, Ford Automotive, the massive automotive company. They made the Model T. They made the automobile affordable for everybody. They made it possible for every person to drive a car, the automobile. And then Henry Ford introduced him to Thomas Edison. Napoleon Hill hung out with Thomas Edison. This is the guy who introduced recorded video, recorded sound, the modern light bulb. He hung out with the greatest of the great Napoleon Hill was around Roy Firestone with Firestone, the, 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 the uh, tire makers. Napoleon Hill was around the best people in the world. He actually was the speechwriter for Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who got us out of the Depression. He was the business coach of Oral Roberts, the founder of Oral Roberts University. But what happened was, after he became a best-selling author, he started hanging around the wrong people. He started hanging around the wrong people. And what happened was he started hanging around some bootleggers, some guys who made alcohol illegally during the time of prohibition. And Napoleon Hill was uh, ordered then to testify in the court of law against, under oath, against people that he hung around. And he did it. And his information was damning to those people. And they went to jail as a result of him testifying what they had done. And so they put a hit out on Napoleon Hill. They put out a, a issue. They said, hey, we're going we're gonna to kill you. And so he went into hiding. And when he went into hiding, he got very, very depressed. And he wrote this book called Outwitting the Devil. But his wife made him promise that he wouldn't release the book until after he died because the book is so crazy. But Napoleon Hill wanted to release the book. And she says, no, no, you can't release the book. He says, I want you to get the book out. No. So he decides not to release the book. And the book didn't come out until after his death, which is why the book isn't as popular. But Sharon Lecter, who co-wrote the book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad with Robert Kiyosaki, she dug up the manuscript and she teamed up with the Napoleon Hill Foundation and they released the book Outwitting the Devil. And what they're talking about is the battle that happens within your mind is the biggest battle that you have to win as a business owner. Chup, as a business coach, Eric Chup, how, how do you see this manifest itself on a daily basis? The battle that happens within your own mind, within the mind of a client, is the biggest battle that you and they have to face as a business owner. A lot of times it's it's that just mindset of staying focused on what actually matters because there's so many things that can distract you when you're running and growing a business. And so having that uh, willpower to fight that habit of wanting to go to the next thing or not being able to stay focused is something that I see a lot. I'm going to be super duper duper transparent with all the listeners today. Uh, but I promise that for pretty much everybody listening, it will get weird. So here we go. Hello. <laughs> what causes inspiration? 
what causes people to be inspired? Mm. What what actually causes someone to be inspired, to be pumped up, to be feeling it? Well, it's setting goals and achieving them. It's keeping small promises that you made to yourself. It's doing the right thing when no one is watching except for God. Doing more than you said you were going to do. It's getting things done before the deadline you promised. You see, inspiration is the reward. Inaction is the giant, but action is the sword. That's worth repeating. Inspiration is the reward, but inaction is the giant. Action is the sword. The the whole idea of not taking action and procrastinating, that's what causes people. What, what What causes people to be depressed? What causes depression for many people? Well, it's lying to yourself. It's saying, I'm not going to eat that kind of food anymore, but you eat it. Why are you looking at me? It's not doing what you said you're going to do. It's setting goals and not achieving them. Now, the only way to escape the feeling of that is a distraction. So when you said to yourself, I'm going to get this done and you don't get it done, the only way that you can not feel horrible about it is a distraction which could be humor. That's why the funniest people are the most depressed. If you look at the lives of the most famous comedians, many of them struggled with depression. We could say Chris Farley as an example. Robin Williams recently, right? Robin Williams. It's because they're a Jim Carrey. It's because they're battling demons inside their head. Now, when people say they're battling demons, I actually do believe they are battling demons. What happens is when you feel bad about yourself, Typically, the only way to distract from feeling that way is humor. So I grew up at a time in my life where certain things happened to me as a kid. Uh, You know, I had a neighbor. I stuttered a lot as a kid. I stuttered all the time. I I couldn't um, uh, speak well. And so as a kid, I got known in the neighborhood as Clayton. And all the kids would say it that way. And it was funny to them But for me, it wasn't funny. And it was funny for them because they didn't know how to deal with feeling bad that I couldn't talk. So they made fun of me as a way to deal with it. It's like a pressure release, right? Then as a kid, I wanted to have friends, but I didn't have any friends. And so one of the neighbor kids wanted to be my friend, and that's the neighbor kid that sexually abused me consistently. And so when I then brought up the fact that I was being abused to his parents, to her parents. It was a his and her. I, I, it, was, it was a young lady as well as a, a, her, her brother. And I brought it up. And the dad said to me, he's, oh, you're making that up. Oh, you're, you're making it up. That couldn't have happened because it must be your fault. And then denial turns out, it turns out denial is not just a river in Egypt. You know, denial is not just a river in Egypt. You know, see the... the see what the, you did there. Right. So I want to make sure you get this is missing meetings. If you're somebody who's chronically late, you miss meetings, you don't do what you said you're going to do, you will be depressed. Now, the reason why I see a lot of entrepreneurs who are depressed is because you're setting goals that are beyond that of what society has set for you. You're setting goals that are big, bigger than the average person's goals. You've got goals to be the number one in your industry. You want to be the goat. You want to be the greatest of all time. You, If you're a pastor, you want to be the biggest pastor in America. If you're a salesperson, you want to be the best salesperson in your office. If you're an entrepreneur, you want to be the fastest growing company in your niche. And so what happens is you start to have a gap between what you want to do and where you're at. And so you start to experience cognitive dissonance. I believe cognitive dissonance is something created by God himself. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do. Either way, psychologists describe it as it's an inconsistency between the beliefs one holds or between one's actions and one's beliefs resulting in feeling bad or guilty, having low self-esteem. So for anybody out there who's listening who is not a Christian, Uh, I have a lot of great content for you today. For those of you who are a Christian, I have a lot of great content for you today. So I'm going to work up the assumption that uh, the first few folks listening right now, you you may be a Judeo-Christian, and so maybe, because that's like half of our population, maybe these will resonate with you. So Christ says in Jeremiah 29, 11, 
For I know the plans I have, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I repeat, for I know the plans I have for you. Right now, listening, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Colossians 3.23 reads, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Now, Chup, Elon Musk, who turns out to not be a Christian, but the guy behind Tesla, PayPal, and SpaceX, a man right now in the top 60 of the wealthiest people on the planet, a man worth over $20 billion, a man transforming the automotive industry, the online payment industry, and space travel. He has a notable quotable that I'd like for you to share with the listeners out there because I know we have somebody listening who's not a Christian and maybe you'd yeah. like to hear a secular voice here. So here we go. Well, he starts it off colorfully, so that's good, right? Nice. nice. <laughs> uh, Elon says, work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. This improves the odds of success. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if you're doing the same thing, you know that you will achieve in four months what it takes them to achieve in a year. Come on. So that right there is a powerful, a powerful, notable, quotable, right, from Elon Musk. And there's somebody out there who says, yeah, but all he cares about is money. And again, this is a discussion. We're going to work through this because I'm, I'm trying to make sure that nobody, there's not a single listener that as a result of today's show, that you could possibly leave this show and not know specifically how to beat laziness, procrastination, and the struggle with getting things done. So if you are a reader of the Bible, Exodus 16.5, it's Exodus 16.5 if you turn with me to your Bible, or if you'll open up uh, the Thrive Time Show podcast, you can click on the notable co- or click on the, on the podcast button and you can see today's show notes. But Exodus 16.5 reads, on the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on other days. Six days? Yeah, you'll also discover that if you read Genesis, you'll see that God created the earth in six days. So Elon Musk and the creator of the earth would indicate that this is what needs to happen. If you're going to create like the creator, you have to work six days. Now, Chep, I say that to clients all the time, but I want to put that on the show notes because I think that is a powerful idea for somebody. If you are going to create like the creator... You must work six days. Again, if I, I'm going to repeat this one more time. If you want to create like the creator, you must work six days. Somebody needs to hear that a fourth time. If you are going to create like the creator, you have to work six days. If you don't want to create like the creator, then you don't need to work six days. But a penalty of having ambition is that you have to work more than the average person in order to build the system. Now, once you have built the system, you can sit back and look at what you've built and you can now have time freedom. But it takes a lot of fuel to get that entrepreneurial rocket into space. Chop, if you're going to create like the creator, you have to work six days a week. Why, why, why do all the entrepreneurs out there who have, who have big dreams have to embrace this idea? Because you're going to have to create time, especially in the early stages of the business, the early few years when you're building everything. You're going to be in the business all the time, working in the business, delivering your goods and services, delivering your products, creating them, whatever you're doing. So you're going to have to create that time outside of normal business hours, nights, weekends, whatever that may be, that sixth day principle, so that you are actually getting the things done on the business and creating a scalable, repeatable system. So therefore, in the future, you will have time freedom. You know what I thought I would do? Since since, since we just quoted scripture and it was all really positive, this is what you need to do to create success. Now let's get some verses that really would represent Satan's worldview. And if you are a Christian, I'll make sure you get this. If you're not a Christian, it's fine. But if you are a Christian, that means that you do embrace the Bible as being the infallible truth of God. And if it is the infallible written word of God, then you would have to believe that there is a literal Satan and a literal Christ. If you don't believe in heaven and hell, uh, Christ and Satan, then you're not actually a Christian. You're just somebody who likes the fairy tale concepts. So I'm going to have Chuck read some notable quotables from the Bible, and let's see if we can pick out the parts of the Bible that Satan is a big fan of. Chuck, go right, for it. This is from uh, 1 John 3, 8. Okay, He says, The one who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 
continue Proverbs 10 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. So it says right here that the Bible, we quoted a Bible verse earlier. If you lazy, you going down, son. Well, That's here, what they say. saying. <laughs> well, Jeremiah 29 11 states, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord is saying this. Christ is saying this. I know the plans that I have for you to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. But then it also says in the Bible, that he become uh, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. So who wants you to be poor? If Christ wants you to be successful, Chuff, who would want you to be poor? S- uh, Satan. Yes. So Satan, Satan the devil. <laughs> this is exactly. a thing. So we move on to the next notable quote. This is First Tim. We'll go. Let's read uh, uh, First Timothy five eight. There, Mister Chuff. Okay. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives and especially for their own household has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So we go back to the beginning of the show, and we said how to fight the habit of getting things done, laziness and procrastination. How to fight the habit of not getting things done, laziness and procrastination, (laughs) drifting. Then we understand why Napoleon Hill wrote a book called Outwitting the Devil, because he came to the belief, and I have always had the belief, that it is Satan that is causing you to lose. So if you are hitting the snooze button, you're succumbing to Satan. If you are skipping those meetings, you're succumbing to Satan. If you are making promises to yourself and not actually keeping them, then you are submitting. You're actually doing Satan's will. Satan wants you to be poor. And if you are a Christian, you should believe that. If you're not a Christian, you should just understand that Elon Musk points out a, a an open atheist that you won't be successful if you don't work hard. Well, and on just let's take it down one more level. Yes. It's really not that hard to understand. <laughs> like if you work more and you work harder and you're proactive and you get more done than your competition, you win. But I would bet you 95% of the people I've met on yeah. the planet struggle oh, no. with getting things done. I Yeah, I totally I, get I, it. I think yeah. Proverbs 16, 27 is a pretty harsh verse here, Chup. This one speaks to me. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Idle lips are his mouthpiece. An evil man shows strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Wickedness loves company and leads others into sin. Could you read it one more time, please? But kind of slower. I want to let it Ooh. soak in. I want to. I want to take some notes here. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Are the devil's workshop. Got it. Got it. Idle lips are his mouthpiece. Mm. An evil man shows strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Wickedness loves company and leads others into sin. I want to make sure we're getting this part. An evil man sows. Strife. They create strife. So Gallup shows today that the average American is watching TV for 5.2 hours a day. I want to put this on the show notes here, Chuck, because you can find this article in the New York Times. I believe you can find it on the New York Post. You can find it in Gallup. The average American is watching TV 5.2 hours per day, which means the average American is idle 5.2 hours a day. Now, if somebody's idle 5.2 hours a day, and if the average American is watching 2.3 hours a day of social media, we'll put this on the show notes. So if the average American is idle 5.2 hours per day, and they're watching social media for 2.3 hours a day, that means if idleness is the devil's workshop, then a lot of people are spending most of their day in the devil's workshop working on what? The stuff that the devil wants. Because right. the cool thing about our economic system is we've, we've done so well in the world we no longer have to spend 90% of our day looking for food. Right. So now we have downtime, and now the average American is watching five hours of TV per day. So we have downtime to be idle, a.k.a., which is why this is why we're spending idle time, a.k.a. the devil's workshop, otherwise known as the devil's workshop. We have five hours a day. If we have five hours a day to not be working, then Gallup shows this. Is it shocking? That 50.8% of employees are not engaged. That means that they don't care about their job. Gallup shows that 17.2% of employees actively hate their job. Chubb, is it shocking that people hate their jobs when they have so much downtime? You know, it's crazy. The, the term actively disengaged 
it kind of blows my mind that you know almost uh what 17.2 percent right exactly 17.2 percent are oh, yeah. actively disengaged it means they're trying to screw up your business they're right. trying to hurt you and like oh it just it blows my mind it kind of makes me speechless but what i see a lot is that it, 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 we got people watching five hours of TV. It, it seems like people are looking for inspiration out there. They're doing something to find inspiration. Oh, you're for watching. Whatever you're it is. watching the the Shark Tank, right? Thinking what? that it's a source of inspiration yeah. rather than actually working on your business. Because you're you see watching the DIY work. shows, thinking that that's going to inspire you to do right. your no action Watch is what creates inspiration. Let's repeat it again. Action creates the inspiration. Somebody okay? doesn't believe you. Well, it's true. So just try it. You you gave me a good example when you were teaching me this concept a few years back. And you said, you know that feeling you get whenever you clean your garage? Right. And you step back and look at it and you want to share that? You're like inspired. You're proud. Right. That's what happens when you take action. You're proud of yourself. You're inspired. If you are in America, if you were born into this great country, you have won the lottery, my man, my woman. You have won the lottery. Do you have any idea what a gift we have by being born in this great country? We've had people that have died on the beaches fighting for you we've had people that have died in normandy fighting for you we've had people at pearl harbor that died fighting for you we have people deployed right now all throughout this great country fighting for you so that you would have the freedom of choice our country guarantees us the right to pursue happiness the right to pursue happiness. It does not guarantee us happiness. Our country did not give us happiness. It gave us the right to pursue happiness. Perhaps you should look that up. So with freedom, you see, freedom isn't free. Freedom is not free. You have to work hard. Freedom requires responsibility. So if you want to have a horrible life, then sleep in till noon. If you want to have success, then don't sleep in till noon. If you are struggling, with overcoming the idea of procrastination, perhaps you should think of the young homeless girl that my wife and I met in Roatan. Perhaps you should think about the people who've died on the beaches. Perhaps you should think about the, the struggle that we went through to build this great country. And Napoleon Hill surrounded himself with really, really bad people. And he went from being a best-selling author to literally hiding and in, 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 in hiding out waiting for these people to die or to go to jail so that he could go outside again. Could you imagine what it would feel like to be a best-selling author and the best-selling author of all time and now being in hiding? And so Napoleon Hill, he was going through depression because he realizes, oh my gosh, the people I surrounded myself with did in fact lead to my demise and now I'm in hiding. And so we have uh, taken certain selections from the book, Outwitting the Devil, certain uh, uh, excerpts from the book. And I'm going to have Eric Chupp read the notable quotables one by one from the book, Outwitting the Devil, The Secret to Freedom and Success. And then we're going to break it down together. So, Eric Chupp, what is the first notable quotable? Okay, we've got, remember that your dominating thoughts attract through a definite law of nature by the shortest and most convenient route, their physical counterpart. Be careful what your thoughts dwell upon. Wow. Mm. Think about that. So I'm asking you right now, Mr. Thriver, Mr. Wonderful Listener, Mrs. Wonderful Listener, um, Mr. Future Millionaire, Mr. Super Successful in the Future, Mr. Maybe You're Already Successful Now, Mr. I Don't Care What You've Been Through, I Don't Care Where You Come From, I Care Where You're Going. Mr. I Know That Whatever You Did in the Past Has Not Excluded You From Having Success in the Future Because We Serve a Great God Who Forgives You. And unless you're listening right now from America's prison system, and I do know we have some downloads from America's prison system, um, I know it will be hard for you. But those of you who have the freedom of choice, whatever you think about, you bring about. So if you want to uh, bring about negativity and poverty, I want you to go to the casino every day. If you want that, if that's what you want, I mean, if you want to bring about negativity, that I want you to surround yourself with really negative people. If you want to struggle in the game of life, I need you. It's so important that you commit to watching violent films. If you want to be negative, it's really, really important that you fill your mind with negative music at all times. Because, Chuck, you can't be successful if you're filling your mind with negativity. So if you want to stay negative, you got to fill your mind with negativity. I think Dr. Z has a really good saying. I've heard him say on the show many times. Uh, if you run with the dogs, you get fleas. 
Right. And that's what he's saying here. If you're filling your mind with all that stuff, that garbage in, garbage out. Now, here is the next notable quotable from Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. The secret to freedom and success. Mr. Chep. The majority of people begin to drift as soon as they are met with opposition. And not one out of 10,000 people will keep on trying after failing two or three times. Woo. Read that again, please. The majority of people begin to drift as soon as they are met with opposition. And not one... Out of 10,000, one out of 10,000 people will keep on trying after failing two or three times. This is so funny, but I had a conversation the other day, and I actually got into an argument with somebody about this. It was a a pretty epic battle, but he said to me, he goes, hey, I know those first three years that you built uh, Thrive, and it was failing. It's got to feel really good now that it's succeeding. And I said to him, (laughs) I said, I literally said this, I said, I remember the first three years that you were raising your baby and you were failing. And it's great to see that she can now talk and walk. (laughs) It's ridiculous. It's a process. And so if you think that you're going to have a great idea and have massive success, no, oh, no, because you should look this up. You see, Chuck, we'll put this on the show notes real quick here. But it took Amazon nine years to make a profit. It took Amazon nine years to make a profit. You know, and we, we'll put this on the show notes because it, Walt Disney lost it all. Walt Disney lost it all twice, right? Do you see? Walt Disney lost it all twice. And we'll put this on the show notes because this is so important for the listeners. But Tesla, Tesla took 10 years to make a profit. And we'll put this on the show notes because this is, this is important for somebody out there. You know that Thomas Edison created 10,000 failed experiments before he created the first functional light bulb and we'll put this on the show we'll we'll, we'll put this on the show notes but jesus christ mentored 12 apostles two of which betrayed him both judas judas turned him in and peter denied that he even knew the guy did you know did you did you know i don't know if you know this but did you know that henry ford lost it all five times did you know that henry ford i mean the great henry ford Lost it all five times. Do you know that it took FedEx over 10 years to make a profit? Do, did you? I don't know if you know this, listeners, but did you know that Facebook lost over $3 million during their first three years? Did you know that Facebook lost over $3 million in their first three years? Did you know, I, 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 did you know, did you know that Oprah was repeatedly abused as a kid? I, I don't know. I don't know if you, did you know that? I mean, so what happens is you're comparing yourself with a false reality. The narrative is, is you have to push through struggle. Strength comes about as a result of struggle. Strength comes about as a result of struggle. So when you work out and you get sore, that's what creates strength. That's what creates the strength. The strength comes from, it comes as a result of struggle. So if you want to get strong muscles, you have to work out until you're sore. If you want to have weak muscles, then you need to avoid soreness. I want to make sure you get that. See, that's a a huge idea. If you want to avoid strength, then what you need to do is avoid struggle. You need to avoid physical pain while working out, and then you won't ever, you'll actually get atrophy over time. So if you want to avoid strength, be weak. Right. (laughs) It's pretty pretty simple. (laughs) It's it's a thing. So let's read the next notable quotable, my friend. The next notable quotable. Fear and failure facilitate the devil's work because failure breaks down one's morale, destroys self-confidence, subdues enthusiasm, dulls imagination, and drives away definiteness of purpose. So fear is the the concept of false evidence appearing real. So a lot of people are so afraid... They're, they have they see false evidence appearing real that they begin to facilitate the devil's work. Because remember, the idleness is the devil's workshop. So now you're not taking actions. And now you're getting that procrastination. And when you get that procrastination going, now it destroys your morale because, remember, idleness is the devil's workshop. So it subdues enthusiasm because, remember, inspiration is the reward you get. You don't feel inspiration before you take action. Inspiration is the reward you get you, you get for taking action. Inspiration is the reward you get for taking action. So what happens is you begin to want to dull the imagination, drive away from your goals because you know you're not going to achieve them. So why even try? So you turn now to a vice. 
you turn to a vice. Now, I know of four major vices, and Chup, you can put this on the show notes, that attack many people I know. And it's not comfortable to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it, and hopefully we have an uncomfortable conversation together. There's four vices that, that, that people use to cope with feeling terrible about themselves as a result of cognitive dissonance. One is random lovers. It's random lovers. It's random sexual relationships. It's, it's having, it's hooking up with people. It's the new boyfriend. You want the new boyfriend to make you happy. You want the new girlfriend to make you happy. You're not happy, but if you just had a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend, then you could be happy because you see, you see, it's not, it's the reason why you're not happy isn't because you're not happy. No, it couldn't be that. It's because they've failed to love you the way you need to be loved. And so you've got to look for random lovers, a new, the new relationship. You've got to do that. The second thing is, it is buying new things. It's the acquisition of stuff. You see, the acquisition of stuff does not lead to peace. In fact, it leads to turmoil. You see, as you spend more and more money, you have more and more things to maintain. But people buy new things. They always want to buy new things to 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 keep them uh, uh, mentally fixated. It feels on the, good. It's it, so nice. Right. The third is uh, people talk about this all the time, but it's drugs. It's people doing drugs. I mean, it's just to numb the pain. It's to block out things. The next one is alcohol and gambling. And I think alcohol and gambling go together. A lot of people don't gamble until they do alcohol. A lot of people don't do alcohol until they gamble. And so it's the combination of both. Now, and again, there might have a different vice. Someone here might say, I'll, I'll add some more here, Chep, that I, I see all the time. Video games. I see people now, it's a new vice. It's like, I'm going to play video games all day because, you know, it's a way to keep me feeling like I'm productive. I can score a bunch of points in a game that doesn't matter. Right. I'm seeing virtual reality now becoming a, a crazy vice. Uh, people that have that don't do anything physically they don't have real relationships it's a virtual reality building world. fake cities and fake businesses and all kinds of things everywhere i see this all the time now chuck there's another there's another notable quotable from napoleon hill please read it to us there are many parallels drawn to thomas edison and his success after hundreds of failures in that he will always be remembered because he converted failure into a stepping stone to eventual achievement while others used it as an alibi for not producing results so what happens is, yes. is when I am struggling, uh, when I have something that it's taken me a long time to do, I'll give you an example. When we first uh, did this radio show, I had to record demos by myself. Yeah. So I actually <laughs> had to record radio shows by myself that no one would listen to, and I had to send them to somebody who would give me feedback that on That feels them. good. That always feels good. Then when they finally got to a level through a lot of coaching, through a lot of months, where they were finally to a level where um, you know, they were acceptable, we got a chance to run our show on the weekends. So we didn't get a chance to run our show during the week. We got to run our shows on the weekends because no one's listening. Right, <laughs> And then we got a chance to run them at night, and now we have a primetime slot. But I will just tell you this, I had to constantly battle the devil. So I actually said, and I do say, I would say, I would encourage you to say, I said all the time, and I do say, I said, I'll say it today, I'll say it tomorrow, I say it every day, I said, Satan, get the hell out of my mind, I can do this. Boom. And I say it all the time. I'm constantly saying, Satan, get the hell out of my life. I can do this. I say it all the time. I speak to my mountains. And those of you who are Christians will see in the Bible, they reference speaking the word much more than hearing the word and much more than reading the word. It is so important for you to speak to your mountains. You have to speak it into existence. Now, Chuck, let's move on to the next notable quotable. Okay, he says, the devil, fear, controls people by making negative thinking and destructive actions pleasing to them. So people like doing drugs. They like the feel of ecstasy when they're having their new relationship. I'm telling you what, when a couple is having hot and passionate sex at the casino the other day, I went to the casino with my wife. We went to go see a, a comedian. And true story, we're walking out, and I see a guy who's probably, he's probably, you know, late 50s. And I know for a fact that he was hooking up for a one and done with someone who's probably 19. Mm. And I guarantee you at that moment, whether he's married or not or whatever, he feels good in his flesh or he feels good right now. But neither one of them are going to be a part of that relationship long 
term. And I see so many men having affairs and ruining their relationships because they it feels good in the short term. The devil controls people by making negative thinking and destructive actions pleasing to them. Eric Chupp, on to the next note. Okay, here we come. We got another one. Advice for what to teach in public schools. He says, teach children the true nature of the golden rule, and above all, show them that through the operation of this principle, everything they do to and for another, they do also for themselves. This is a huge idea. Mm. When you over-deliver, eventually you get overpaid. The most selfish thing you can do in business is over-deliver for your clients. Which we talked about earlier in Colossians 3.23. This is not new information from the Bible. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So what you have to do is every day at work, you see, you've got to try to over-deliver. You got to over deliver. You got to try to exceed the expectations of every single person you come in contact with because why, Chup? Because that is going to make you overpaid in the future. Let me tell you how humans work. Yeah. Because I'm a human, you're a human. This is how it works. Ooh, we're both humans. There's a thing called cathartic. Right. It's, 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 it's a cathartic thing, you see. A lot of times, if you are um, feeling bad, you have to tell somebody else. You know, you, right. Because cathartically, it's a psychological term that means providing relief through the open expression of strong emotions. So what happens is, is if you're really frustrated, you just got to get it out. You ever say, have you ever said, I just got to get it out. I, I just got to, I got to get, I got I guess got to tell somebody. So whenever somebody over delivers to you, you cathartically feel the need to tell somebody. This is why people talk so negatively about bad restaurants, right? Because you don't like the restaurant. You feel the need right. to tell other people because you feel bad about it. You want to just tell somebody. You feel the need. You also do the same thing when you're wowed. And this is what we call the net promoter score. You see, Harvard calls it the net promoter score. What we're going to do is we're going to put a link to the net promoter score. It's called the number one number. It's, it's called the only number you need to grow. It's by Harvard, uh, the Harvard Business Review. They studied successful companies, and they found, shockingly enough, that the companies that are growing are the companies, they're the companies that are actually wowing Customers. So when you wow customers, they feel a need to share it with, on average, of three to five people. When people are wowed, they feel the need to share it. When, you're, when you wow your boss, your boss feels the need to share it with three to five people. But here's the deal. When you miss a deadline, oh, when you miss a deadline, when you show up work, to, to work late, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, you see, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, when you show up late to work, when you miss a deadline, the customer, the boss feels the need to share it with somebody else. And so they're not speaking bad about you behind your back. You're speaking bad about yourself in oh, front of yourself. Oh, do that again. Yeah. You're not, they're not speaking bad about you behind your back. They're speaking the truth about you. So when you have an affair, oh, this is one of my favorites. When you have an affair with a coworker, you know, when you have an affair, your employees aren't talking bad about you behind your back. No, you see what they're doing is they are just speaking out loud about the truth. And it's not a rumor. It's not gossip if it's true. Right. <laughs> so when you miss your deadlines all the time and you hear people talking about you negatively, when you hear people talking about you negatively all the time because you look negative all the time, you have a negative face. You look negative all the time. You look depressed all the time. People talk about it because it's the truth. Now, the next notable quotable, Chuck, what, what do we have? Kind of an uplifting from page 176 of Napoleon Hill's book, Outwitting the Devil, The Secret to Freedom and Success. Teach children the danger of believing anything merely because their parents, religious instructors, or someone else says it is so. So there are so, is there so many times, let's just say that you are a Christian, you listen to today's show. I hope that you're a Christian because it's your belief. Um, but what happens is a lot of people just do what their parents do. So let me just give an example. If I was born a Democrat or I was born a Republican, if I was born a Muslim or if I was born a Christian, if I was born into poverty or if I was born into success, typically people don't change. People change seldom. They like to stick with their views. So here's an example. If you're listening right now and you are a Democrat, I would just ask you to describe why. 
If you're a Republican, I'd ask you to describe why. And most of the time, people don't know. They don't know why they're a Republican or a Democrat. They just are. And that's what happens is when you go to church and you have a pastor who doesn't preach from the actual Bible, which uh, turns out some of them don't. Uh, I actually went to Oral Roberts University, and I remember all the time Richard Roberts would say things out of the Bible that if you read the context around what he was saying, you would discover that what he was saying was completely not accurate based <laughs> upon the actual Bible. But everybody's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm, I'll bind that. He mm. literally had a guest speaker come in who had us all stand up. Chip, Chip have I talked to you about the, the, the name it, claim it guy? I th- Maybe the, so. The, I money, the, the money cometh guy? Money cometh, yeah. I think He yeah. had us all stand up. Just, I want everyone to stand up. You see, our Lord Jesus ha, has a plan to prosper each and every one of you. You see, in the Bible, it says to it says this. It says in the Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11, which is true. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Preach. Plans to give you hope and a future. So I want everyone to stand to your feet, and I want you to say after me, Money cometh. Money, money cometh. I want everyone to say money cometh. So people are saying money cometh. And they don't know why they're saying money cometh. They just feel like it's in the Bible because it kind of sounds cometh. biblical. <laughs> and if you look up, we'll put a link to it in the show notes. It's Leroy Thompson. Leroy Thompson and the money cometh to me now. Money cometh. Leroy Thompson. This guy. I'm telling you what. This guy convince people this is what he said Chub. this is what he says you tell me if you have a problem with this yeah let me hear it he then says he says now what i want you to do is the lord told me he has a plan to prosper me prosper me so if you right now are here i want you to say this a money cometh to me now and the lord wants me to buy a jet i'm talking about a nice jet a personal jet the lord wants me to have a, and i'm not making this up a mercedes benz so i want you to get up right now and take all of the money in your pocket right now and i want you to bring it down to the altar and give it to me now because the lord has commanded you to give me the money now and because i can't make this up i'm going to put a link to it on the show notes so that the people can hear his actual sermons chop in your mind is there something wrong with that Seems scammy from the outside looking in. You know what I mean? Um, I can see how people... It's it's bad that the person there is in that spot where they're able to influence because it seems fairly obvious that he's trying to influence his wallet by preaching hope to other people. And mm. that's not how it works. It's interesting. You know, it's, it's kind of crazy, but um, over time, um, people will begin to investigate people that make those kind of claims. You know, they'll start to investigate and look into it and... and over time, you're going to start to discover that certain people will take advantage of you, and they'll do anything needed to make a buck, right? except for tell you the truth. Honest work. <laughs> so, the, so the truth is that a lot of people are out there scamming you, and whether it's this show or another show or wherever you get your information from, I would encourage you to discover the source. As an example, Matt, you need to take a shower just for hearing the name Lauer convinced a lot of women to have sex with him so that he could get, they could become promoted and become celebrities. Matt Lauer was, was really good at that for a long time, of convincing women that if you want to become successful, you've got to have some sex for if you want to become successful, you've got to have some sex. <laughs> Don't because, make me laugh about that. That's not good. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's what he did. I know. And then ultimately the truth came out. So if you're listening to somebody right now that is saying things over your life that feel like they can't possibly be true, like you can make a million dollars working from your laptop by a pool or Leroy Thompson telling you money cometh now, uh, you've got to just consider the source, look into it, and make sure you're not blind to people that are manipulating you. Chup, the next notable quote from page 182 from Napoleon Hill's Best-selling book, Outwitting the Devil, The Secret to Financial Freedom and Success. So on page 182, Napoleon Hill says, It is a sin to permit one's mind to be dominated by negative thoughts of envy, greed, fear, hatred, intolerance, vanity, self-pity, or discouragement, because these states of mind lead to the habit of drifting. It is a sin to cheat, lie, and steal, because these habits destroy self-respect, subdue one's conscience, and lead to unhappiness. 
And it's unfortunate, but I've met so many clients I've coached over the years who've told me, they said, you know what? You actually, your model on business pricing, where you, you, you and Dr. Z always say that you should be the pig at breakfast and not the hog, you know, you should never take advantage of people. I've heard of, I mean, I'm serious. I've had probably 25 contractors tell me this. They've said, it's the first time in my life that I haven't tried to take advantage of like yuppies. You know, like charge them like double because they can afford it. Right, because they feel like you can get away with it. And I feel good about it now. Like, I feel good. Like, I really do feel good. And guess what? So does that person, and they know it, and then they will probably refer you to all their friends that say, we need a new kitchen. So when you're wowing somebody, understand you're not just wowing them. God is watching, and you're going to get it back. You're sowing seeds of diligence. You're, 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 You're going to reap the fruits of implementing the golden rule. Chop, the next nut of a quotable. Okay, we said we've got here, the class of people who control their environmental influences are the non-drifters. Oh, boy. All who are victims of the habit of drifting forfeit their power to choose their own environment. They become the victims of every negative influence of their environment. So, Chup, I give I give the mic to you. If you could describe mm-hmm. the man cave yeah. and Camp Clark and Chicken Palace and how I have been intentional about designing my own influences, I've divided, how I've designed my own environment at the man cave, and then explain the Thrive Time Show World Headquarters. I think we could explain them both fairly easily. Um, they are just enshrined in everything you love and all of your guiding principles. So let's go with the man cave. Man cave. Visually, what Visually. are some things you can see within eye, your eyesight right now? Right now, Vanessa and the kids, there's photos. Yep. Uh, American flags everywhere. Yep. There's maybe 1,422 letter Zs. On the walls, hanging from the ceiling, so everywhere let me explain else. All, all of the things. books that he's read forever are all like all of this so let stuff. Me, let me yep. explain all this real quick so yep. you get it. I put the letter Z up everywhere because he is the man who has made the single biggest impact in my life, and I never want to forget how big of a part he's played in my life. When Top he, of mind. When he is gone, I want my kids to know about him, and then when I die, I want my kids' kids to know about me. I want our generations to know that Dr. Zellner did not have to, but that he believed in Clay Clark for whatever reason, right. and that he decided to mentor somebody he didn't have to. I'm not his son, but he made such an impact in my life. He's chosen, he's actually said, when my dad passed away from ALS, he said, I would like to be your dad if you, if you need that in your life. I mean, who, who awesome. asks that? That's awesome. I, I put pictures of the American flag everywhere up because I don't want to forget the impact that, that they made on our lives, that the people who've died and fought for us. I don't want to ever forget about that. I don't want right. to forget about the freedoms we have as a, a country as a result of the sacrifices of the men and women who've died serving our nation. I never want to forget that. So because I know that I would have the habit of naturally drifting and forgetting, I put it everywhere. And then the two cool things are Edison bulbs and pinion wood, just everywhere. <laughs> and you know why we chose Edison bulbs, though? I think they're, they look awesome. I don't know. You like to... Why? I don't know. Thomas Edison's one of my favorite people. I guess That's we why I started getting interested him, huh? into it. He's <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite people. Yeah, and he was the one who made the first light bulb. And so I wanted to, uh, as a tribute to Thomas Edison, put it up in any kind of building that I do. Yep. The reason why I have a, a picture of Sam Adams up is right because here. Sam <laughs> Adams, I don't know if people know this, but Sam Adams is the reason why the Revolutionary War started. Yeah. If you look up the history, he's he was the only one who would stand up to the occupation of the British people. Chup, why why do I put positive, notable quotables everywhere? Why do you think I put those books up everywhere? Why? Why? Uh, you have a saying that I've read on, I believe, on the bathroom wall at the Thrive headquarters, and it says, uh, you don't spell words, words cast a spell on you. And so... The same principle we were talking about earlier in the show here in the podcast: uh, garbage in, garbage out. Top of mind. You want you all of. The, the, if you ever go to the bathroom and seen a notable quotable and thought, "That's top of mind." Yeah, I mean, oh. it's right there. It's right. Have, right have you ever had that though? Where you saw a notable quote and you're like, "But well, that's a good thought." Yeah, that's a nugget. Yeah, I like them. I like. It. I read them. I, I'm just saying. I put these up everywhere. So anytime yeah. I find encouraging things, um, principles to live by, just. Good stuff. I try to keep a positive mindset, and it's hard because we live in a world of negativity where there's a lot of darkness, and I try to create positivity. I put elephants up everywhere to remind myself of the goal of franchising. If you look above you, Chuck, can you describe what is above you? 
What is above you? Uh, posters everywhere. There's a drop grid ceiling that has no tiles anymore, and there are posters and frames and Elephant in the Room signs. So just go ahead and, and share some of the posters that are above you. What, right, what one are of they? them, we've got a, uh, a Star Wars poster. Yep. So well, you're a fan of Star Wars. George, well, I'm Obviously a fan George of George Lucas, Lucas his, who created the Star Wars franchise. Right, and how he did that uh, directly above me, let me look away from the mic for a second, is the Beatles crossing Abbey Road. And why do we have the Beatles? Because the Beatles changed music Right, revolutionary. Forever. Who else do we have above you, Chuck? Um, it looks like we've got the soldier, a uh, famous photo of the soldier kissing a kissing a lady. We returned from D Day. Right. Returned from World War Two. Right. Returned from Victory V Day. We got that. Then we've got a family photo uh, kind of collage here, right above us, of the Clarks. This is stuff we do. And Chuck, why are we always burning pinion wood? Because it's awesome. Because it smells <laughs> good. You've got to create your own environment. Right. The class of people, again to quote Napoleon Hill, the class of people who control their own environmental influences are the non-drifters, all who are victims of the habit of drifting, forfeit their power to choose their environment. They become the victims of their negative influence of their environment. Chop on to the next notable quote. Before we do that, I just got to say, that little exercise we just did helped me, so I guarantee you that it helped the listeners out there. That, just kind of understanding that quote, tying it all together with that, really helps. So That's that awesome. why we do it. I'm telling you, your mind becomes what the mind is fed. Right. So I have to feed my mind positive things. Mm. On to the next one. Mind broccoli. Yeah. Uh, you are entitled to know that two entities occupy your body. One of these entities is motivated is motivated by the respond is motivated by and responds to the impulse of fear. The other is motivated by and responds to the impulse of faith. Will you be guided by faith or will you allow fear to take over you? I think most people that I have met are overtaken by fear. Fear of loss, fear of what will happen if it doesn't work, fear of embarrassment from your friends if your business doesn't work out well, fear of rejection, fear of your staff yelling at you if you hold them accountable, fear of what if your ads don't work, fear of making big claims in your ads because it might offend the competition, fear of whatever. I'm asking you rhetorically, what are you afraid of? We have a saying that we say a lot. It's called... Uh, People can tend to suffer from paralysis by analysis. Yes. Do you think that the root of that is fear? You just fear of making the wrong choice, fear of yes. whatever? Yes, which is why we say BOOM all the time, because BOOM stands for Big, Overwhelming, Optimistic Momentum. BOOM. You've got to bring the BOOM to any situation, because if you let enough time sit in, if enough... If you have pre uh, procrastination sets in, uh. if you allow enough time to go by, fear will set in. And the best way to combat a fear of anything is just jump off the diving board. Yes. Bring the boom, the big, overwhelming, optimistic momentum. Chop the next notable quotable. The capacity to surmount failure without being discouraged is the chief asset of every person who attains outstanding success in any calling. So the question I would have for you, Mr. Listener, Mrs. Listener, is what is your capacity to surmount failure without being discouraged? What is your capacity? You know, um, it, it, this is a, an idea. This is a, a big idea. You know, Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill, who was Winston Churchill? Winston Churchill was the guy who uh, was the prime minister was the prime minister of what? He was the prime minister of England, of the of the United Kingdom during the time of what? World War II. Chump, have you read a lot about World War II? Have you ever studied a lot of World War II? Uh, when I was younger, actually, I did. Got into a lot into the whole what was going on in Germany and all that. Well, you probably know this, but I'm going to go ahead and share this notable quotable with the listeners. Now I'm going to share the story behind it because there's no better example than I can think of than World War II and Winston Churchill. You see, Winston Churchill was the prime minister, and he thought that Adolf Hitler was absolutely a horrible, horrible person. He thought that Adolf Hitler was terrible. He thought it was bad that he was rounding up Polish people and was killing them. He thought it was bad that Adolf Hitler had convinced an entire generation of people to exterminate a group of people. He got people to stand up and to make that ridiculous Heil Hitler uh, uh, a gesture. He got them to put red bands on their arms with the Nazi swastika. He convinced them that the, the Polish people and the Polish Jews should be completely exterminated. If you think about this, Chop, I'm going to pull this up because I want to make sure that you, you see this because this is unbelievable. This is like, it's a thing where 
This is what he did. Yeah, it's awful. He convinced people to round up and kill all of the Jewish people. Other Me- people. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're high-fiving him. Yeah. He convinced people that it's a good idea to exterminate an entire race of people. Now, the only person who was in charge at the time who could do something about it, the only person who was in charge, this is powerful, was Winston Churchill. And so Adolf Hitler came to Winston Churchill and he said, he said this, he said, if you will turn over your Jewish people to us, then we will go ahead and stop bombing you. And all the other countries said, cool, man, that's cool. You mean we can live? Okay, fine, I'll turn over the Jewish people. But Winston Churchill said, and if you look it up, it, it, it's called the, uh, there's a movie that just came out about Winston Churchill. We'll put a link to the movie on the show notes. If you haven't seen it, it was just in theaters here recently. But he stood up in Parliament. Again, nobody else wanted to help. I don't know if you understand this, Mr. Listener. Mr. Listener, I want you to see this. Did you know that America wasn't going to help? Did you know that? Did you know that the American people, Chup, did not want to help out our brethren in England? Did you know that? We, right. we were not going to help? Yeah. And so we were letting all these people be exterminated. And, and this is what happens is Winston Churchill says, he gets up in front of Parliament and he says, we will fight you by sea, by air, by land. And until every single one of us breathes our last breath, our island will remain free and we will protect our Jewish brethren. Do you realize how powerful that was for his people? But he was being advised by every single other person within parliament that he should go ahead, that he should go ahead and do what, Chup? What should win? What, what do you think the people around him thought he should be doing? They're being bombed every day. They're Stop. being decimated. Turn them over. They're being bombed by the Germans. Yeah. No, we don't want to die. He says, no, 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 no. We're not. We are not going to give in to you, Mr. Hitler. We're not going to do it. And so he says, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. And what's so inspiring about the movie The Darkest Hour, which we put a link to on the show notes, and what's so inspiring, by the way, Chubb, if you've not seen that movie, it's awesome. I haven't seen it yet. If you haven't seen the movie, you haven't read the books, you haven't read about Winston Churchill, Chubb, he said that quote while being bombed. Right. That's- <laughs> and do you know what he used to say every single day on the radio? He used to hop on the radio every single day in the United Kingdom. And do you know what he used to? He used to hop on the radio every single day, and this is what he would say. Keep calm and carry on. Again, he would hop on the mic and say, attention, keep calm and carry on. So people were listening to their radio by candlelight while the bombs are coming down. Imagine what it would be like having dinner with your mom and dad and being bombed. All around you. Seeing the glasses shake. Yeah. Hearing everything shake seeing things blowing up, hearing sirens, hearing uh, explosions in the distance, Planes, yeah, looking wow. out the windows and seeing the bombs coming down, seeing things on fire, hearing the sirens, hearing the screaming, hearing the crying, hearing the babies waking up at night, and to have the kind of balls to hop on, <laughs> the courage of conviction, to hop on the radio and to say, Keep calm and carry on when you know that you're an island country and there's literally nowhere else for you to go. Right. And that the, the United States president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, when our president, this guy, says, we're not going to help. Polling data showed that Americans didn't want to enter into the war. He would didn't not stand up and fight to help the Jewish people. And so he, Winston Churchill had to go it alone. And that's what it's like being an entrepreneur, but not nearly as extreme. You're not being bombed. If you lose, it'll soon pass. You'll move on. You could go into bankruptcy right. and redo it, but you cannot be paralyzed by fear, Mr. Chuck. And so, you know, to this point of success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. One way to be able to do that, a little action, a little tool for you here is to keep your goals top of mind. Yes. If you're looking forward after that failure, because you know that you're still marching towards a goal and not backwards at what just happened, then you're going to be able to get through it. And eventually, like Clay just said, 
it's not going to, most of the time, it's not going to be that bad. You'll just start something new. Keep going. But keep those goals that you're marching towards top of mind so that you're not affected by those failures. And now that I've advocated, now that I've endorsed, now that I've said that you deciding, you, you deciding not to do your job, and again, now that I've, now that I've said this, let me make sure I'm on the record here. Now that I've said that your decision to not do your job is succumbing to Satan, now that I've said that Franklin Delano Roosevelt was a terrible president, let's continue. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, he says, failure is a man-made circumstance. It is never real until accepted by man as permanent. You just have to fight kind of through we adversity. Yeah. you got to fight through. Now, Chip, we have another notable quotable from the book Think and Grow Rich. The author of Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, he wrote another book called Outwitting the Devil, The Secret to Freedom and Success, which you should buy. He says what? Men and women who come to the closing chapter of life disappointed because they did not attain the goal which they had set their hearts upon achieving, they teach us what not to do. A lot of people, Ugh. right when they get near the end of their life, then they typically say, I wish I would have. I wish I would have done this. So I'm encouraging you to live a life without regrets and to do what you know you need to do to fight through adversity, to set the freaking alarm and to get up at 3 a.m., get up at 4 a.m., rise and grind, do what you have to do to become successful, put in those extra hours, delay the gratification, get off of social media, focus, take your wife on a date for your family. Go to church for your faith. Call, be a friend to the people that don't have friends. Be a friend to the people in the lunchroom that don't have a friend. Be a friend to the people that don't have a friend. I'm encouraging you to delay gratification. Save money. I'm encouraging you to work out until you're sore, and then do two more reps, two more. and then two more reps. I encourage you to push through the pain because there truly can be no pain without gain. Chup, what is the next notable quotable, the final notable quotable, the, the final excerpt from Outwitting the Devil, The Secret to Financial Freedom and Success? He says, fear is the tool of a man-made devil. And Napoleon Hill and I would differ on this idea, but that's okay. Napoleon Hill believed that the devil was just in your mind. I believe that's what Carlton Pearson, one of my former mentors, uh, believed. Uh, he was a famous evangelist who became a, a universalist, a.k.a. a Christian heretic. He believed that. I think that's what Elon Musk probably believes. I'm not going to argue with you about whether you believe in Judeo-Christian uh, and that belief system. Because I, do, I have accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, I am passionate about about um, Christ, but if you choose not to have a relationship with Christ, I'm not going to judge you or argue with you about it or get into it, because ultimately I do believe God's the judge, and he knows your heart, and maybe you don't believe in Christ, and, and maybe he judges you differently than I think he would. So I'm not going to judge you for that, but I can say this. I do judge people based upon their actions and not based upon their intentions. I do, the world does, judge people based upon their actions and not based upon their intentions. So the older I get, the older I get, the more that this final notable quotable makes sense to me. Now, this notable quotable comes from Napoleon Hill's mentor, Andrew Carnegie. Now, Andrew Carnegie was not a Christian, but he did grow up to become the world's wealthiest man. And what Andrew Carnegie says here next, I think is powerful, so powerful enough that I think it's important that you would take the time to go ahead and and write down, go ahead and write it down, go ahead and, and, and take notes of this, because this is a powerful quote from Napoleon Hill's mentor. He says this, he says, as I grow older, I pay less attention, I pay less attention to what men say. I just watch what they do, which is why in our office, I put keystroke recorders on people's computers. You, do you tell them? Nope. They're on most of them. <laughs> I just don't bring it up every day. I wrote it in the bathroom, but I don't bring it up every day. I don't say, hey, True. by the way. But they, they are on there, so occasionally I have to pull the data. Um, I do watch the video footage of our office. And I can tell you, many times I'm pleasantly surprised about the work ethic. The person who gets to work at 730 and people think I'm not watching. They're supposed to be there at 8, but they got there early. I see that. The person who extends the 
uh, a handshake to the person who's, you know, or opens the door for the person who comes to the office burdened by having a lot of things in their hands, the person who picks up the piece of trash, the person who says hello uh, to the young girl who's struggling with a disease. I see that. The little things when they think nobody's watching. That's the things that people watch. And so as a capstone thought for you, you have to decide right now, are you going to become a slave to the literal or figurative devil in your own mind? Or are you going to be the person who breaks the chains, who breaks the bondage of not getting things done? Are you the person who's going to break the chains of laziness? Are you going to be somebody who breaks the generational cycle of procrastination? Are you going to be the person who breaks the habit force of drifting? Or are you going to succumb to the natural habit force that society puts out there called drifting? My name's Clay Clark. I'm a business coach. That's Eric Chupp. He's a business coach. I am. Without any further ado, three, two, two one, boo! Keep calm and carry on. Keep calm and carry on. Keep calm and carry on. God blesses the hands of the diligent.